Welcome to another deep dive tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to do a deep dive into the custom work order feature. Let's get started. So to create a custom work order in Fishbowl Inventory, the main place you can go is on the cells order screen. So I'll go to the cells order screen and click new. Put in the customer I'm going to create a quote for and put in the number of pool covers that they order. So let's put two just so you can see what happens if we don't put one. I'll click the green plus sign over here on the right select custom work order click next and hey you're familiar with this screen we just saw this this is the batch add screen that we just saw um, so we're going to create a different design number so we don't get the same one before so I'm just going to make something up you'll not want to make anything up use your SolidWorks uh, uh, drawing number um, when you're when you're doing this for the first time you want to try it as realistic as possible especially if you're testing your file testing QuickBooks or excuse me testing Fishbowl making sure the way you're putting it in is actually going to work so grab an actual design from SolidWorks or an actual design from wherever so this is going to be custom pool cover um, let's see if it gives us a color. Maybe we can give it a color. I don't know. Custom pool color green. We'll see what I need to do to make it green later. Now, if we're installing it, I think we decided to do service. But you may want to try different ways to see which one works best for you. You may want to try creating the finished good as an inventory type item creating the finished good as a non-inventory type item, creating the finished good as a service, right? Try all the different ways. Now that I click next, it's not going to give me that pop-up and we'll click finish. Then we're ready to enter our raw goods now that we created the finished good. We're ready to enter these raw goods. It says quantity of two for labor. We'll put uh, labor and quantity of one for utilities. Anchor Spring, but SPRI. And you'll see I did that with very little mouse touching. Tab from the quantity, enter after you have the raw good in. And that took me three minutes to enter a huge number of lines, right? And then we probably want to go through and check our work make sure we enter the quantity correctly on everything so far it looks good if we did enter a quantity wrong then we would just select it click the x and re-enter it there's no changing the quantity or the unit of measure if you need to change the unit of measure it can't be done on this screen right here it has to be done before you enter this in with the part okay we'll click next and now here we are at the cost breakdown to see if we have um, a good a good cost if we don't then we need to make sure the costs are in the system before we do the work order so this was probably the case with you if you're starting to use fishbowl for the first time and you're putting in your first test work order we want to make sure that all the costs are in there so the quickest and easiest way to get the cost in there if you're in average costing is to create a purchase order for all these items and purchase them 
If you're in standard costing, then you can do an export of the part product vendor pricing spreadsheet, put the standard costs on each part, and import it. Now, the very last step, we either want to issue it or save it. If we issue it, it turns it into a sales order. If we save it, it leaves it as an estimate. Okay. So usually when we're creating these, uh, the sales rep is creating it for the first time and trying to get a cost for, um, for the customer. So instead of issuing it, let's save it and go purchase some items that, that we need so we can have some costs in here. Now, another way, I mentioned if you're on standard costing, you can import it using the PP vendor pricing. You can import all those costs. If you're on average costing, you can also import the average costs for these items. look at our costs on this part we'll say manufacturer order calculate cost and we've got cost 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 awesome that's what we want right so if we want to make money which we do we need to know what the cost of this custom work order is so we can mark it up and make some money so this button right here was calculate cost excuse me on the manufacturer order screen okay so you have to issue the sales order go to the manufacturer order screen and click calculate cost on that specific work order go to the last page and make note of that. That's 2,834.65. Whoops. 2,834.65. We'll say. Two thousand eight hundred thirty-four sixty-five times. How much do we want to mark it up? 80%? 1.8. Enter. There we go. There's our sales price. So notice there is no part cost there because we've never built it. If we had built it before and it was in stock, then it would be there. And that's the nature of custom, right? We, we don't build custom manufacturer orders every day. So you're not going to have a cost, cost, you're not going to have a quantity in there. So you'll want to issue the sales order, then go to the manufacturer order and, and put that on there. Okay. So let's, um, let's take a look at the next thing I want to show you. And that is um, changing this custom work order into a standard bomb. This is really awesome. I love this new feature. It 
Is that not awesome or what? So if you want to change this work order into a bill of material, just click that and look it's the same icon for bill of material and now this custom work order is standard. If you find that you're selling this same thing over and over again, bam, there you go. Or if the sales rep did all this work to put this work order in and it really should have been a bill of material, then you simply go to the manufacturer order, issue it, and then click bill of material. Makes sense you have to issue it before you can make it a bill of material. So now I don't know if I want to go over the next step in this tutorial because the next step where we schedule the work order and start the work order and finish the work order is exactly the same as all the other work orders. There's no different. So this tutorial is the deep dive into the custom work order. Thanks for joining us today at Brando Consulting in a deep dive of creating a custom work order.